This tree is supposed to cure depression? We'll see about that. Now, I've seen a lot of videos of people on the internet claiming this is the tree of happiness and it cures depression and all this stuff, but those seem like pretty strong claims. And I've read a little bit of the clinical research and pharmacology of this plant, which is Albizia julibrisin, or Persian silk tree, or the mosa tree. And uh, it seems dubious at best. Uh, pretty strong claims, but uh, I think the flowers can be used, but I've seen most people use the bark of it. So let's harvest some bark, make some tea, and see if that cures my crippling depression. Just kidding, I don't have crippling depression, but I'll see what it does at least. But funny enough, I think that simply the act of going outside and harvesting the most of bark is probably going to do more for your depression than anything else. You should never underestimate the placebo effect. The placebo effect has been shown that even if you know it's a placebo effect, it still works. There's a really fascinating book called The Expectation Effect that kind of covers that, but just generally the concept of how expectations color our experiences. And that's why people believe in like manifestation and all that stuff, because it kind of works. I mean, you're more likely to see what you're looking for. It is an introduced species and it is highly invasive in some areas. You don't have to worry about over harvesting it. And feral foraging, one of the best foraging accounts out there, he actually inspired me to make foraging videos myself. Uh, he says that people can actually have a bad reaction from this and I'll be careful. Oh, much easier without the stone knife. I always use a stone knife for things. I'm like, that's gotta be paleo. Sometimes you want a real thin blade. By the way, if you don't want to kill the plant, you don't want to take the bark all the way around a tree. And even though this is invasive and plenty of people would probably say that I should kill this, uh, it's not really invasive in my area, so I still feel bad. Maybe that's crazy. You should just kill all invasive species, whether they're invasive in your area or not. But personally, I can't do it. Okay, I think that's plenty for now. I tried to make it pretty strong, but it doesn't taste like much. Uh, see if it has any effects. I suppose I could have dried it and ground it up for better extraction. I might do that with the future things. Let's see. Well, I drank the bark tea twice a day, every day for a week, and didn't notice any effects. Perhaps the, the bark was low potency because of seasonality, or maybe I didn't properly extract it. I may personally not respond to the compounds, or just didn't notice the effect. Reports of the antidepressant effects of this plant on humans appear to be mainly anecdotal and, as noted, maybe simply a placebo effect. But various albizia species have been traditionally used for antidepressant and anti-anxiety effects, with the bark and flowers uh, being used. And certain saponins and flavonoids may act to regulate the serotonin system via 5-HT and GABA receptors as seen on tests in rats, but need further investigation for convincing evidence. So while my experience doesn't debunk the ability of this plant to be an antidepressant, my interpretation of its use is that uh, the plant probably has some low level effects on the serotonin system, but you're probably better off just going outside to gather it and getting some exercise, learning something new, asserting your agency in the world, eating a health, diverse and balanced diet, having a sleep schedule, and so on. One final note is that in my opinion, Anytime I see someone assert that some herbal medicine will do something like make you happy or cure grief or open your heart or treat some other abstract and complex emotional state, it's an immediate red flag that that person's not practicing evidence-based medicine. While I do believe that there's a place for traditional shamanic practices, I don't like blurring the lines between those and evidence-based herbal medicines as it leads to the delegitimization of the latter in the eyes of those who do not believe in plant medicine.